bless you. How's everyone this morning? Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. Let's see. We have been looking at the the um, all of the the aspects of hermeneutics. And let's let's uh, cite them one more time, another time. And we'll do that for us. Cite those aspects of hermeneutics. What it is and what are they? What are the aspects? So, okay. So hermeneutics is science of interpreting the Bible, interpreting scripture. And when we do that, what are we what are we looking for? What what makes up this biblical hermeneutic? I think I heard Karen say it. Well, a little. That's right. Amen. When we when we interpret scripture biblically, we want to interpret it literally. What else? We want to once we establish the idea of literal, what do we pursue then? What do we look at? The history. We need to look at the historical um, information that's available for any passage, any book, in order to understand it. That is so important. What would you, what would you, uh, a modern day um, um, concept of, of history, when we're looking at history, history really helps us to understand, in fact, our present. We, we can't understand America apart from our past. History doesn't happen in a vacuum. We, we don't live in a vacuum. We live in, in the context of what has, what has been. And that's why we celebrate birthdays. That's why we celebrate July. For, because we're, we're observant of, of this, how important our history is. And we don't want to lose that. That's so, so essential to, um, to, our, to our present day. Then once we get a history, a historical context, what do we look for? What, 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 what's, what does that build for us? Context. Context, that's right. Context is essential. We don't want to take words, passages out of its context, out of its soil. So important that you keep it in the soil. Uh, if you take it out of the soil, it, that passage will, like plants, you transplant a plant and you don't keep it in that immediate soil, you transplant it, you're probably going to lose it. What you want to do is transplant it, but keep it in the soil and move it within the same soil that it's in into a new pot. You put some fresh soil in there, yeah, but. It, you need to keep it in that context in which it, in which it grew. And uh, there's, there's a wonderful, uh, or maybe yeah, I shouldn't say wonderful, but there's a nice uh, television program that reminds me of context. When you're looking at context, what, what are you Searching. And, and there's a nice program that, that reveals that concept of searching. What is it? Remember I was talking about it? CSI, crime scene. Crime, crime scene investigation, and, and that's what we're doing in the context, looking at the history, looking at what's going on in that verse, in that passage, and, and trying to derive, again, a, a general understanding of what, what's there. So we, we, we uh, literally approach it, we uh, look for the history, we look for the context, then what are we doing? By looking at context, one of the things we're looking at is what? Grammar. We're looking at words. Words have value. They mean something. And we just can't glibly run over it. If we don't know what that word means, we've got work to do. We've got to dig in there and find out what that word, any word, means. Uh, we need to uh, look at both grammar and what else? Then we want to synthesize. We, and, and in synthesis, what are we doing? We're cross-referencing because there, there's a, a wonderful principle that we're aware of. What is that? When we're comparing scripture with scripture, what's, what's the basic principle that we're um, um, embracing? It is truth, but what's the basic? That's right. Good. Good. That's right. Excellent. Very good. Very good. The Bible is a coherent unit, and we don't want to take one passage and isolate it by itself, as Karen said, and build a doctrine on it. We don't want to do that. 
And um, that, that's what protects our understanding of the text when we approach scripture that way. Once we have synthesized, we're probably ready now to do what? Make application. Let's do that. I, I, we, we've done a lot over the past few weeks. And now I want to take you to this passage in John chapter 13. And I want to exercise the principle, the biblical principle of herm hermeneutics. So we can now, our, our objective now is, our main objective now is application. In fact, that's always the main objective. To do the word of God. Not just to know it, not just to read it, but to do it. Blessed are they that, um, in fact, um, the gospel, I'm sorry, the first chapter of the book of Revelation, John said, blessed are they that read, they that what? Hear, and the third is what? They that do the prophecies of this book. So it's reading, it's hearing it, and doing it. So that's, that's ultimately what, what God wants. He wants to transform us by way of his word. There in, in the Gospel of, of John, in chapter 13, let's uh, read through it. Here we're in John 13, and let's start at verse 1. If you would, I, I want someone, um, maybe a couple of you, uh, would read verses 1 through. Let's go through verse 16. I'm sorry, verse 17. Verse 17. All right, start reading if you don't mind, please. Amen. Let me ask you. Jesus said, let me read it. I'm reading from um, what's called the uh, ESV, ESV Bible. And the, this translation says, if you then call, if you then, if I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Let me ask you. Should we wash each other's feet? 
Everybody's laughing. Dad. <laughs> Should we wash one another's feet? Do we take it literal? Interesting. Okay, okay. How many of you think we, we should wash each other's feet? Tyre, is that, that a question or is that a yes? I, I just think that, that is symbolic. Okay, well, can we, uh, I, want, I want to get there. I mean, so you, you, don't think we should, you don't think we should wash one another's feet? How many believe we should wash one another's feet based on this text? Yes or no? Okay, how many... Is that a yes? That's a question. <laughs> you have a statement, okay. 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 Okay, I, I, I'm, tr I'm trying to establish something first. Let, is, is that a yes or no? I'm trying to... Can, look, can I... Can I... Can I... Can I, I look. Don't start. <laughs> look, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to establish a point here. I, I want to know. I want to know. How many of you believe this does... Uh, we should not wash each other's feet. All right, let, let me ask you that. Let me start again. How many of you believe, based on this passage, based on what this passage says, that we should wash one another's feet? Amen. Okay, just raise your hand. Based on this passage, you believe we should wash one another's feet? Okay. Now, based on this passage, how many of you feel like we should not wash one another's feet? Okay, R raise your hands. Okay. Now, now, what we're going to do, what, we, what we're going to do, I want <clears throat> to, both camps, both camps, what do we need to do? What do, what do we need to do? Sure, sure, anybody, come on. What, what, what are we after? What are we after? We want to we interpret, right? And we want to interpret how? Literally? With, with what in mind? History? And we're looking for what? Context. And we're examining words. And then with words, we then do what? We synthesize. We apply all of that. And then once we've applied all of that, we have what? Then we can apply. All right. So let's, let's do this. What, what, what's the... Uh, um, now, now, literally, literally, what took place? Let's establish that. What literally took place in the text? Sure. Okay. Jesus washed their feet. Okay. All of the disciples, including Judas, right? Um, now, now, there's not much. I mean, obviously, that, that happened, right? I mean, that was not an allegory. That, that was a literal experience, right? So we're, we're understanding it like that. Second, what do we want to do? Now we're looking for what? Historical. We need to look at the history. So somebody talk to me about the history of, of uh, foot washing. What? what, what? Okay, Carol. <laughs> well, first of all, during that time, people did a lot of walking. Okay. And of course, the kind of shoes they had. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. The servant mm -hmm. would wash the guest's feet. 
Okay. So, of course, Jesus took the place of, of the servant, but I think they were probably very surprised when he got down to mm -hmm. do that because normally the, the servant of the house okay. would do that with each person. Okay, okay. Good, good history, sure. Um, Pastor Kane. And from what I've learned, it wasn't just any servant. Okay. It was the lowest servant. The lowest servant. The lowest servant. Okay. Good. Any, any, excellent, excellent. Any other history uh, that you, you all are aware of about foot washing in, in the uh, first century? Sure. Sure. When, um, Pastor Benson. When the, uh, when, when, um, the Lord, you know, the came to Abraham, mm -hmm. uh, Abraham said he will wash his feet. Okay. Because Abraham, uh, uh, the Lord is the angel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. So you you're synthesizing now. You're you're going back to an Old Testament illustration of when um Abraham washed the the angels' feet. Okay, good. Good. Um another um history, Charles? Well, I would say it was a way to honor the guests. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Any more history? Any more history? We're looking for historical information about foot washing in the first century. Pastor Kane, and then um, <coughs> Pastor Mike. Okay. Okay. Good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. One, one other element about the uh, foot washing as well, um, I think uh, Pastor Cain said it would be, the, was it the lowest servant? And, and also, um, it tended to be a non-Jewish person. The, the, uh, the, the Jew was not required by law to do that, to do that type of servile, low work. It was a non-Jew um, um, servant that they had who would generally do that. Um, so, and any other information about history in in uh, in this passage? So, let's put it all together: non-Jewish servant, the lowest in the house, washed feet. What happened in this case? What happened here in John 13? Sure, Reese. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, but for I am. But if I did, your Lord and your master has uh, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one, of, one another's feet. Okay. Uh, I mean, it, he's kind of put that thing in reverse because the, the historical facts show us that it was the lowest, it was the servant. And, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Why? Why did Jesus do that? Sister Stewart? Okay. Okay, to give an example, but any other reasons why he did it? Sure, Bonnie. Because uh, it, as a leader, you're supposed to be a servant. Okay, okay, good, good. Sure, Sheila. Okay. All right. Good. Good. Sure. Sister Shield. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's teaching humility. Okay. Okay. All right. An okay. Another reason. Sure. Sister Williams. Okay. All right. Sister Dorsey. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Good. Okay. All right. Good. Let me uh, let me move from here over. Let me start here. Let me go, Gerald. Symbolism. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. Spiritual cleansing. Good. Another reason why Jesus did it. Sure, Larry. Um, we don't see it in John's account, but the parallel account in Luke 22 lets us know that in the midst of this, before Jesus did this, they were arguing about who was the greatest. <laughs> good. Good. And in the midst of that, mm -hmm. he says, okay, I'm going to show true greatness. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the servant. Good. And so that really just had a, a real impact. Good, good, good. Synthesis. Right. Amen. Amen. Sure. Another reason why uh, Jesus did it. Okay. And if he can do it, everybody. Okay, good. Dan, another reason. Mm -hmm. It's showing total humility. Total, total humility. humility. Yeah. Now, here's the Savior. Mm -hmm. Stoop down that low to wash mm -hmm. my feet. That's right. Mm -hmm. I don't question it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will wash your feet. Okay. That's what he's telling me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. Wow. All right. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to find nothing to disregard that. Okay. I'm going to take it. Okay. Literally, okay. Well, what it say? All right, so we should just move on now. I mean, y'all can do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Sister Carter. <laughs> Sister Carter. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. All right. Another reason why uh, perhaps Jesus did it as well. Let, let me get Marvin and then um, Pastor Kane. Larry? Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Sure. Um, Pastor Kane. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Very good. One, one last. Brother Stewart. And, and then Brother uh, Romy. We, we change the word? Which word? Oh, those churches that do foot washing. Oh, they ask you to clean your feet. That's just respectful, I think, brother. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm just teasing, just teasing. But, but that's a good, good point, good point. Are, are we serving or, or is this just for show? Good. Bro okay. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. 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 Brother Romy. Okay. Okay. Good. And and one last. And Charles and then then we're gonna move on. Say it again. 
Ajá. Ok. Do unto others. Ok. Mm -hmm. Ok. All right. Good. Good. Do unto others. All right. Sure. Sister Parson. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Ok. All right. All right. OK, good, good. Um, can, can I just add maybe one, um, one reason in addition to that is, is that nobody else did it. Isn't that, that's kind of obvious, right? <laughs> nobody, there was no servant. Nobody else did it. And so they come into the, into the house, and instead of doing it, what did they do? They sat right down at the table, and it should have happened when, historically? Before supper, when they're coming in the house. So here they're sitting at supper with dirty feet. And, and if you know how they, they do you know how they're, they're sitting historically? How, how do they sit? They're reclining. They're sort of leaning on their elbows, and the person to your left your feet are probably, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get, get the picture, get the picture. Dirty feet. <laughs> so he did it because nobody else chose to do it. And he took a, like you said, like you all said, uh, he took a, a great opportunity to, to uh, demonstrate humility. Let, let me uh, get uh, Brother Tommy. Get uh, my brother. Uh, your name again? Wheeler. Brother Wheeler. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Amen. Excellent. Excellent. I like that. That's good. Great, great application. Amen. Go ahead, Mom. Sure. That was that was the initial question. Should we wash each each other's uh, feet? Yes. Okay. That's, that's vital. That's vital to the issue, to the question. Did everybody uh, hear, hear and understand what Marvin was saying? As, as an example, it's, it's not, he didn't say do this. He said as an example of, of what? What is he giving an example of? Serving. If, now, now, there are those, there are those who feel, uh, again, 
very strongly that foot washing is very appropriate among, among um, believers. And then there are those who take it from a more historical um, perspective, saying that that's not what Jesus, his instructions weren't that we should wash each other's feet, but his instructions were, he gave us an example about how to what? Serve one another. If we approach it from the historical perspective, Give me an example of servanthood today that we can illustrate that in the body. If it's not foot washing, then what is it? What is it? Clean someone's house. Servants do clean. Good. Good. Cleaning uh, one, one another's house. Um, um, helping, helping people. Sure. Sister Dorsey. Caretaking. What, what would that look like? Sick, taking care of the sick. Good, good. Another, another example. Sister Carter. For Sister um, uh, Maddie Jennings. Excellent. Sister Betty would go over her house, what, virtually daily? Um, to, to serve, just to serve. Uh, what, what else? Other examples? Comfort, comforting one. The comfort ministry. Good, in a time of loss. Okay, all right. Sure, sure. Other examples, Brother Romy. Okay. All right, all right, good, good. Other examples, any others? Sure. Um, Audrey, is that your hand up? Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, good. Um, and Brother Tommy. Others, other examples. Sure, Karen. Mm-hmm. Bearing one another's burdens. Good, good. Now, now what we've, I'm sure, sorry, yeah, Sister Hamilton. That mm-hmm. could be anything. That could be a person who's economically strapped. They need money for anything, uh, mortgages mm-hmm. or whatever. And you can meet that need or help mm-hmm. them to meet that need. I think that's essential. Mm-hmm. Good, good. Um, did I see someone else's hand, Kathy? Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. And and you know what? <laughs> All right, Reese. Uh huh.
Okay. That's service. Good. So men, you know, those of you available, you can show up. What? What? Man. <laughs> but, but good point. Good. <laughs> Just take it over. And it don't matter whether you took a shower or not, because you need to be clean from the Amen. Amen. All right, but but you know, let let, let me uh, ask you this: in in washing the feet, and, and a number of you men, mentioned it, that it symbolized what? I think like, what, what was it, what was it that it symbolized? Serve. No, no, no. Washing the feet. Jesus said what? What what did he say? Look at the text. Look at the text. What did? It, look at. Uh, um, the challenge, verse 7. He came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered and said, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered and said to him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has, who has bathed, does not need to wash. Now, what, what is, what's going on there? What's going on there? Peter said, don't just wash my feet. Because Jesus said, look, if, if I don't wash you, you have no part in me. And so Peter said, well, if, if that's what it means, if foot washing means that, then don't stop with my head. Wash my head too. Jesus responds to him and says what? What, is, what does the text What does the text say? The one who has bathed does not need to wash. Now, what is he talking about bathed? Peter said, wash my head. He wants the whole body washed, right? And so Jesus says, you don't need the whole body. Why? Why, why not? Why not? The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet. If you've been in a bath, You've been in a bath. You don't need a full body wash. This is what Peter, this is what Jesus is saying to Peter. I don't have to wash your head and your body now. I just need to wash your feet. What is he talking about there? What, what is Jesus trying to tell Peter? Go ahead, Mark. Okay. Good. 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 Jesus is clearly using this as an example to illustrate service and humility in serving. But he's also using it to demonstrate the connection with him. He said, if I don't wash you, you have what? No part. Clearly the symbolism is that, like Marvin said, that he's talking about salvation when he's talking about washing the whole body. Once you're saved, you've been washed entirely. That's, so Peter said, look, don't stop with my feet. Wash my whole body. And Jesus said, no, you don't need a whole body wash. What you need, because you're in me, is what? Just your feet. So Jesus said, look, look at the verse, look at the verse again. Verse 10, Jesus said to him, the one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but it is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. Who would that be? Judas. Judas. For he knew who was to betray him, and that was why he said, not all of you are clean. But look at verse 12. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and, re and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Jesus was illustrating what? Now, he didn't give Peter a full body wash because he's already saved. Amen. But Peter needed what? What does, what does foot washing symbolize in, in the context? Cleansing. And I think, uh, what is it, Brother Wilbur? Wheeler. Brother Wheeler stated 
that it, it's a great illustration of, again, we don't need a whole body wash, but our walking, our walking, we, we get dirty. We get dirty in our, in our walk. So what do we need? If we get dirty in our walk, what do we need? We need cleansing and we need to wash the feet, right? So Jesus says, if I've washed your feet, do what? Wash one another's feet. Meaning what? If there is sin in one another's lives, what do we do? Not, not just forgiving. What, what is this? It's cleansing. Help them what? Restore. Cleanse. Help. Hello. 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 <laughs> Sure. Sure. Well, let. Well. That. Uh, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> well. Well, this this is application. Our lesson about application. <laughs> and thank you for the challenge. Uh, but right in the context, though, this is what Jesus is doing with it, with the lesson, where, where he takes the, the opportunity to illustrate with foot washing. He says to them, I want you to do the same thing. Well, what was he doing with the foot washing? He told Peter, I'm washing your, your feet to illustrate what you should do for one another when you get dirt, when you get your feet dirty. I mean, that, that's right there in the text. He says, we don't need a whole body wash. What we need is only the feet to be washed. Correct. Mm-hmm. Correct. And see. And that our walk needs to be clean. Correct. But where, like, where, connect that Okay, excellent question. Excellent question. Here in the text, Jesus says, uh, well, let me go back to what Peter said. Simon Peter in verse 9 says, Lord, don't just wash my feet only, but also my hands and my head. So he's asking Jesus, wash, wash me thoroughly, through and through, my whole body. Jesus said to him, the one who has bathed, does not need to wash except for his feet. So now, what, what does he mean by that? Peter says, wash my body, wash my, my, my whole body. And Jesus says, you don't need that. All you need is, is your feet. So what, what, does, what does that whole body wash uh, symbolize in Jesus' thinking? What is he doing in the text with it? See, that, that's what I want you to see, that what he's doing in the text, he's suggesting to Peter, not all of you are clean. There's one who's not fully clean. Who is that? That's Judas. Now, how do we know he's not fully clean? He's going to deceive, I mean, uh, betray. Satan enters him, and he's going to betray Jesus. So that means he's not as what we would call today, what? Saved. We see that in the text. What, what he's trying to illustrate that uh, Judas wasn't thoroughly clean. The other disciples were what? Thoroughly clean, therefore saved. But what they needed was what? They needed feet washing. And so Jesus takes the opportunity to demonstrate to them. Um, and, and what you have are two levels. Yeah, he's trying to demonstrate humility. But it's also trying to demonstrate that when we get our feet dirty, which, what does that mean? If the whole body is dirty, what does that mean? The whole body being dirty means we're lost in sin, correct? When the feet get dirty, what does that mean? We, we, and that's where Brother uh, Wheeler, Karen, that's where Brother Wheeler helped us with, with that statement, that it's our walk. Our walk will, um, is being indicated in, in that passage by, by Jesus. So if, if our walk gets dirty, um, we're, we're to wash one another's feet. What, what does the ultimate, what's the ultimate point here? That, that we should seek to help cleanse each other's lives. Do, do you see that? And 
synthesize that passage? What is it in Galatians? Galatians 6. 6? Why don't you read it, Dan? What does it say? Mm -hmm. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, which you spiritual. which are spiritually, restore such a one mm -hmm. in the spirit of meekness, mm -hmm. considering thyself, mm -hmm. lest thou also be tempted. Excellent, excellent. Amen. In a spirit of humility. humility. So, what, what that immediately, am I intruding? No. You were going to say I something? So. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what that immediately teaches is that when we go to wash, all right, um, you, you see my feet dirty, meaning what? They need to be clean. Yeah, you see my feet dirty. I, I, you see me doing something, saying something, attitude, whatever. Some type of, of sinful infraction you see in my life. Now, you can, you can um, approach me rather, um, how, how can, there, there, there's some ways to approach me. Give, illustrate some of those, other than humble. Haughty. Haughty. What would that sound like, Sherry? Just being very judgmental. And, and what, what would it sound like? Um, I saw you talking to that sister, and it really wasn't right how you did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, way to go, Sherry. <laughs> that, is that literal? I mean, what is <laughs> Just playing. I mean, I mean, I mean, so we don't we don't want to approach it. We don't want to approach one another like that. Galatians says, "Do it what with the spirit of what? Like you're a, a servant, and the servant gets down on his what on his knees to serve. See that that helps to restore. That that's the method of restoring. Let let me get some hands, and then um, we'll, let me get sure." What were you going to say, Pastor Benson? Good. Please. The ideals, the imagery of a Oriental coming from a public bath. Good. Okay. Good. He's already paid. Everybody listening? Listen, listen up. Great. Great point. Paid, but now he's walking back home. So he's Excellent. Excellent. Amen. I think there was a wonderful point uh, Pastor Benson mentioned, and he called it the Oriental. In the first century, they had public baths. And, you know, you'd have to walk there, right? And in the public bath, you'd take a bath, but then what do you do? You got to walk home. And so, in walking home, you know, your whole body doesn't get dirty again, just your feet. Excellent, excellent point. Yes. Did that help, Karen? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure. I get all that and, and um, you know, just mm -hmm. dirty in the bath. I just don't see it all. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. I get it. Okay. Okay. Skip some. Okay. Okay, okay. So, and so, like, so if, you have, if you're not real familiar with the Bible and some of that okay. kind of stuff, okay. and maybe everyone here is, okay. and I think that's great, mm -hmm. um, then it, that would have been like a big deal. Yeah. Okay. Right. And, and you know what? You're, you're yeah, absolutely... Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. And, and we do that in, in, in study. I mean, we list the, the, the steps. What? Literal, historical, context, grammar... Synthesis, and when when and this, we we almost do it simultaneous. Everything's <laughs> happening, you know, it, it, and it does come come across that way, and, and you know I apologize for that. But let me get Brother Wheel. He had his hand up again. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Amen. I think um, the passage that uh, my dad read, Galatians 6, uh, brethren, you who are, uh, if you overtake your brother in a fault, you who are spiritual, go to him. Amen. But first do what? Consider yourself. Um, less, uh, you know, the, the whole point is I need to take an inventory of my own life before I try and wash someone else's. And, and it's, I think it's very appropriate. I think we need to. I think what you're saying is absolutely right. We need to um, take a, a, an, um, you know, an evaluation of ourselves, our own attitudes, and our own walk. Um, but then, once we do that, we need to do it with a humble, humble spirit. Marvin, go right ahead. Mm-hmm. It does take work, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It does take work. It really does. And but you're you're right. It it yields a, a great blessing. Amen. Sister Carter. Yes. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Sure. Pastor Shelton. Uh huh. Excellent. Excellent point. Excellent point. Amen. Excellent point. That That's exactly what. Uh, Tyrone said at the very beginning, same thing, um, that we, we could, um, <clears throat> you know, on communion Sunday, so some churches do it, they, they uh, do foot washing. And we could plan that. We could make sure that you wash your feet before you come to the, we, we could plan, we, we could do that. But the, the fact that we are artificially planning it and doing it, is it really serving? Amen. It's it's really a, just a, a huge demonstration of, of our um, 
humility. <laughs> if, you understand what I'm saying? And it's really, a, a, it can become a pride, a thing of pride. Here we're demonstrating our humility in front of everyone. So we, make, we could make it a, a real show. And, and that's not, it's not really what Jesus was after. What he really was after is that, that we would, and I think I heard a number of you say that, not for show, but, but really um, humble ourselves before God and before other people, whether anyone sees it or not, particularly in, in the area of sin when, when our feet get dirty. We want to be very uh, um, sensitive to the needs of others, your brother and your sister. And right now, there may be someone in your mind, in your heart, somebody you may be aware of who is struggling. And maybe you've been watching them. Maybe you've been seeing it happen, and you're saying, wow, and, but, but you haven't said anything, and um, what do you do? I, I, I think what we do is, we, we, number one, we pray and, and begin looking at our own heart, our own lives, and, and then, it, you know, as, as God leads, um, we, we need to seek to get that, that brother or that sister, their feet washed, and maybe God wants to use you in that, uh, in that regard. Galatians 6. Brothers, you who are spiritual, restore such a one. Amen. You know, yes, sir. Christ mm -hmm. did not tell him to wash his feet before he washed his feet. He washed his feet there was dirty. That's right. So we should do the same thing. There's a certain time the person will have to say, take a bath at home and wash your feet. Mm -hmm. Do it when it becomes necessary. Okay. Amen. All right. And that shows the humility. But don't go there pride. Okay, good. Proud. Yeah. Good. Good. Very good. Amen. I'm sorry. Elijah, go ahead. Um, in this, Christ also washed Judas Iscariot's feet. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It says twice he was clean. That's right. In what way? Wasn't he clean? Spiritually, he was not clean. But yet, now this is a great point. And, and Karen? Great point. If Jesus washed Judas' feet and yet he wasn't clean, what, is, what does that illustrate? Good. Good. I mean, I mean, it, it's go through the motions. That's right. Good. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's true. But but it, I guess the, the point one of the points I think I heard Elijah saying is that he wasn't clean, even though Jesus washed his feet, which means he wasn't clean in which in what way? In his heart, that's right. His life, though feet were clean outwardly, but his life was not clean, which therefore made his feet, the whole illustration about cleaning his feet, really just pointless. So, go ahead. Sure, Elijah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, at this t in, in the text, I think he said there is, I think he, Jesus pointed out that there was one. He said there was only one that wasn't uh, Amen. Uh, clean. Yeah. And uh, we're going to wind it up. Uh, but, but, Gerald, go ahead. Yes. Uh, but verse 18 says, I just want to uh, mm -hmm. ask this question. I do not speak concerning all of you. Mm -hmm. I know whom I have chosen, mm -hmm. but that the scripture may be fulfilled. Mm hmm. Of what? As an example of, he knows he's using a symbolization that he's cleansed, that um, the people are cleansed who are, that have received him. Mm hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Good. 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 Sure. Amen. Amen. I, I really appreciate uh, <laughs> it is going on 20. Father, thank you so much for our time and, and really appreciate your spirit. Thank you for um, the uh, admonition um, to be humble and to serve others. I pray that you'll find us um, busying ourselves, Lord, to um, serve in every way. Use us as uh, instruments in your hand. Thank you again for the saints. and pray that you'll bless our fellowship downstairs. Be glorified, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.